Uh, Anna Hill is here to, uh, to talk about the uh, Thames Deckway project. Thanks, Peter. Thanks very much. So the Thames Deckway is a cycling infrastructure, something completely different, and we're just launching our social campaign to gain cyclist support, citizen support. Um, very interested in the Dutch approach to integrated behaviour change. So I'm going to start by previewing our crowdfund video, which hasn't been shown to an audience before, so I'd be interested to get your reactions. Thanks. We have a very exciting vision to put a cycle transportation corridor floating along the River Thames through the heart of London stretching from Battersea to Greenwich. I'm Anna Hill and I'm the founding entrepreneur and the co-inventor of the Thames Deckway alongside David Nixon. The Thames offers us a solution to so many of London's problems. It's an incredible resource that's currently being really underused. It offers the potential of clean energy generation through the tidal currents and the wind. And we have here an opportunity to actually create a fresh air corridor through the heart of London that's safe for cyclists. The Thames Deckway will work with a series of pontoons which are joined together and are then moored to the riverbed and cyclists will access these pontoons by hinged ramps, hinged so that they respond to the tidal range of the river. We're very conscious of minimising effects on the river so the deckway has been designed using technology that's commonplace, used in marinas all around the world so that there really is a light touch as an environmental organisation, we're all very conscious of making sure that we come up with the most sustainable solutions to the design of the new deckway. It's going to be transformational. The Thames Deckway is an inspirational project, I think, because the Thames has been London's lifeline uh, throughout history. And if you look at images of the 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th centuries, this river was buzzing with activity, people crisscrossing it, going up and down it. Today, it's pretty dead by comparison, really. So uh, why don't we use it for cycling? The Thames Deckway could be ready as soon as 2019 for cyclists to use. We're raising £250,000 to develop our master plan, to develop the engineering further, and to measure how many cyclists will use the Thames Deckway. Where we're at currently is we've built a world-class team, including Hugh Broughton Architects and Arab Engineers. David Nixon and I have developed a blueprint and master plan of the engineering and the service provision. So with the success of this campaign, we're ready to go. We are now so close to making this happen. We have the engineers, we have the designs, and we have a plan. Join us in making the Thames Deckway a reality by backing this project and sharing our campaign with your friends on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you. So, a, a different approach to the standard approach, and I'll explain why we're opting for this approach. So to create a clean technology generating infrastructure in London and a flood relief structure as well that can promote citizen active engagements and also deal with some of the planetary sustainability issues. We've um, been, we're, we're calling it a disruptive technology because um, by definition, a de Disruptive technology is something that displaces an established one. And we're disrupting in two ways from an infrastructure perspective. We're taking bicycles off the road and land routes, and we're putting them on a floating corridor. 
And second, we're rejecting the traditional approaches to energy and dependency by generating 100% clean technology through solar power, tidal turbines and wind turbines, which are discreetly designed within these energy mushrooms. It's an integrated system. Um, Support-wise, um, recently we were given support from the Ray's Impact Accelerator at, King, at sorry, Westminster Impact Hub, um, and that put me through a kind of accelerating program on crowdfunding, on also social campaigning, and we've been building a team. We're working with Make Happy, who are a communications agency, on essentially reaching our target audiences, cyclists being the primary group, but also clean technologists, sustainability experts, and um, design and technology enthusiasts. So our interim scope of work is um, the 250,000 that we're raising through crowdfinance, and that will cover our market research and the route plan for phase one, our revenue forecasts, and business plan investor relations, our city and borough liaisons, standard pontoon design and engineering. We've got the blueprint ready, but we're going to develop it to the next level and outline our construction and operation costs. So the problem, uh, I'm talking to an audience who knows the problem too well and following on from Hank's um, talk, I lived in the Netherlands for three years at work, working at the European Space Agency on something completely different, but familiarising myself with satellite technologies and other things. I experienced how the integrated Dutch solution is just a pleasure to use and there's very little um, conflict on the roads as a result through segregated um, cycling systems. So the problem in London is clearly not just the cycling safety, but the air quality issue, the fact that there's people, particularly women, seem to be desensitised from getting on their bikes for the safety risks involved. Um, and that, in turn, is negatively impacting you know, how healthy we are. <coughs> um, likewise, perhaps it's presumptuous to think that cyclists have more of an appreciation, perhaps, of environmental issues and climate change issues. We need major behaviour change in these areas. So this is a, a Bowles um, solution to deal with that issue. So the solution, clearly um, this is an image taken from Rotherhithe at 1 o'clock p.m. just to show how underused <coughs> the river currently is. Um, and I lived on this riverside um, for a couple of years and observed just the clipper boats and um, short of the, the large um, river platoon that went up on the Queen's um, anniversary, there was um, very little, very little traffic. So um, we see it as an absolutely underused resource that can really benefit and have an impact, positive impact on London to be measured by the number of cyclists we take out of the congested city streets, hopefully out of their cars and overstretched transport system and put them on a safe infrastructure through the middle of town from 12, 12 kilometres in length. So as Peter eloquently put it, also in the show upstairs, London traditionally has been a major infrastructure um, trading corridor and um, a busy transportation corridor. So it, there's nothing new about that idea. In fact, we're just breathing new life into it. So the route we're proposing, it's built in three phases, starting in Bassey. Um, and moving to Greenwich, um, all the way to Greenwich. Construction will be initially two lanes and will have expandable... Um, this is something that our feasibility study will look at, the use of shared lanes between pedestrian usage and cycling usage. 
and it would generate all its own energy and a surplus from sun, wind, tide and the users. So the ramp connection points will be optimised for the cycle superhighway and the cycle hard station and major road intersections. So from the start of, um, of working on the Thames Deckway, it was initiated um, by myself with David Nixon back in 2008, although we'd had discussions previously, we met in the Space Agency in 2005 over in Holland. That's David. Um, we're embodying what, what makes us different. I was asked to um, address this point of where the inspiration came from, is that we're looking at creative systems design and user-centered design. Um, so we've brought together a hybrid team, including um, engineering, architecture, software expertise, and we're providing a disruptive clean technology transportation transportation and flood relief solution that's also scalable to other tidal rivers. Um, we met when we were both working on um, space projects for payloads. Um, David was working um, on a payload for the Soyuz module and I was working on a payload for the um, Columbus module of the International Space Station and a software system. Um, so we shared a lot of interests in terms of systems, environmental science, and sparked a little bit by our frustration working within the heavy bureaucracy of um, the European Space Agency and International Space Agency, a bit like pushing yourself, walking through thick porridge at times, trying to make things happen. We started to brainstorm um, what, we'd, what we would do with the technology and the knowledge we were gaining, and particularly David's uh, 40 years of experience. Um, I've been working in the industry for 10, ten years. Um, we started to brainstorm what we would do if we had free reign of the technology to make an impact on some of the most pressing problems of the 21st century, including climate change. So the team, um, the River Cycleway Consortium is managing the feasibility study the concept design, the route planning, and the stakeholder liaison. Arapa working on our structural energy systems, risk analysis, materials technology. Hugh Broughton, architects, are planning and implementation project architects. And we're advised by Kemp Little as our technology law firm advisors. <coughs> so it's starting small, it's thinking big. Um, we intend to scale. Um, our first step is to commission our feasibility study and we've got this team lined up. We're seeking, we will be seeking um, some consultants in the next phase as well as a financial <coughs> director, but um, we've, we've, we've brought the project to this point. So why not a pro public project? Um, so our design really is intentionally disruptive in that it disregards the obsolete business as usual approach of forcing cycle lanes through narrow streets and making traffic congestion potentially worse and better. Um, we're taking cyclists um, off the streets and making a more enjoyable experience and replacing the danger of road sharing with the pleasure of cycling as a sociable experience, so encouraging cyclists to use it during the weekends as a family leisure activity and um, during the, sorry, so to answer this question <laughs> more, more on the ball, we've also, I've, we've been applying for governments and European grants for the last um, five years to no avail, so there's clearly a disconnect with what innovation represents to myself and my colleagues and what innovation <laughs> represents in government terms. So we've decided on a more citizen um, engagement approach. So the values, um, very important to our growth and our scalability, um, being a clean technology and disruptive transportation infrastructure, our attitude towards um, the future, in terms of promoting positive action, knowledge, creative share, creation and sharing, diversity and um, action for
for climate change. And it's important that we, we do make bold moves in that area. So we'll also create an opportunity to demonstrate leading edge renewable energy systems in order for um, the UK to reach greenhouse gas reduction <coughs> targets. Um, yep. So the projected usage, and this is deliber deliberately an underestimate for in our initial business plan. So for the first five years, um, the cyclist totals, we're also looking at pedestrian totals. Um, these are the figures for the cyclists as targets in our financial plan for the project revenues, a small fraction of total cyclist figures in London. So um, we're starting off with some um, pretty conservative estimations. But these will be looked at and challenged in, in our next phase. The cost, so this is a rough order of magnitude of the development and co construction costs, um, 600 to 700 million in total, um, with the full engineering feasibility being in the range of 1 million. So our initial crowdfunding campaign is 250, okay, um, and just to, to, because this was a public uh, reaction to the cost, we compare it to the 14.8 billion total funding of Crossrail. So thanks very much. I hope this, um, look forward to speaking with you after, after the event. Thank you.